Billy Jameson and his fiance Jessica are in Brussels and planning what to buy at the world's largest tribal art fair. Is that the catalog? Yeah, this is it. Is there anything good in there? Yeah, you never know. I'm looking for that piece with that special mana that sings out at me and says, take me home. For seven days, rare relics and artifacts will be bought and sold in over 70 galleries. And these are dealers in African, South Pacific, North American Indian artifacts all come to Brussels for this art fair. No, I have no idea what that is. It's just, it's so visually bizarre. There's so much material at these galleries that you're scouring. You gotta go back again and again. And sometimes you notice things you didn't notice the first time. You see these, huh? After just a few hours, Jessica's found a piece that interests both of them. So what is the piece you like here? It's the Kono mask. Are you smelling it? More sculpture than mask, it's captured her imagination. Right now, I can only imagine what it would be like to see someone wearing a Kono mask, dancing in these ceremonies for the harvest, for sacrifices. Made by the Bamana people of Mali in the 19th century, this Kono mask was stained with the blood of a sacrificial animal and then worn during fertility festivals. It's rare and highly collectible. Do you want to talk to the guy? Yeah, I'd love to. I love the expression in the tongue, huh? OK, we'll talk to him. OK. Rival collectors are everywhere, so Billy has to move fast to make this deal. How much is the piece? The piece. The piece I tell you, in oh, the secret. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Out of the earshot of any competition, Billy makes his move. 10,000, you have a deal, OK? No. OK, 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 no problem. And right on the spot, he writes a check. Thank you very much. Thank yes, you. Yes, Thank you. you. Thank you. The first 10,000 euros hits the text. The Kono mask is a big score, but the art fair isn't the only place to find the rare, the obscure, or the unique. Beyond the tribal art fair, I'm always looking for other things. There's little shops I stop into and check out the deal in obscure objects, you know, oddities and curiosities. The antiquities shop of Elaine Vandergook is a perfect place to start. It's a paper, eh? Yes, yeah, papier mache, but I think it's uh, middle of the 19th century. This papier-mâché model was made by Dr. Louis Ozu. Frustrated with a shortage of bodies to study anatomy, Ozu made his own. Today, his models are considered exquisite works of art. Is it possible to look inside? Yes. And this comes out, eh? And you can... It's heavy, eh? Made of cork, clay, paper, and glue, Ozu's models detailed every part of the human body. The detail, like the amount yes. of work, eh? It, it comes from a collection of a doctor. What is the price? The price, I ask, uh, 10,000 euros. Would, <laughs> would you consider 6,000 euros? No? No. I pay more. I wouldn't mind paying even more. Mm -hmm. It's just oh, yeah, the, yeah, the condition. No, 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 I know the it's, condition. It's real. But it's Everything. a real one and an old piece. That's Elaine that's won't what? budge. 8,000. If you go 8,000, I'll buy it now. No. You no. can't do it. No, sorry. 8,500 euros? Then you have a deal. Come on. I can't go 9,000. It's getting crazy. It's like, <laughs> it's going to a good home. Uh, honey, for you, yes. Okay. <laughs> that was hard. But you were tired. Fuck. That, no, yeah, that, Jesus. <laughs> These things are quite collectible because they are works of art. This one's a little bit rough, but it was priced accordingly. Billy's on a hot streak in Brussels. When out of the blue, he gets a call from Marc Delorme, an art dealer in Paris. Hey, how are you? Billy. I just heard that the key needs to be auctioned here in Paris. Holy fuck. Yes, there is a lot of interest in it. You're, you're very good friends. This trip just got a lot more interesting. I'm really excited because I'm hoping this guillotine is authentic. There has not been one auctioned for 22 years. The guillotine was invented in 1792 as a painless and humane execution device, just in time for the French Revolution. It remained the official tool of execution in France until the death penalty was abolished in 1981. The last one sold for about the equivalent of 50,000 euros, about $75,000.
Billy just has to see it. It is treasure hunting. And in the blink of an eye, he and Jessica are on the next train to Paris. Billy Jameson is in Paris for the once in a lifetime sale of a guillotine. It's supposed to be an 18th or 19th century guillotine, and I'm hoping it's real. He can't wait to see it and heads straight for the auction house. The auction is still two days away, but the exhibit hall is packed. Billy isn't the only dealer who wants to buy this relic. There's a huge amount of interest in this. You can see, you know, the history of France. Everyone thinks France is the guillotine. The question is, how many of these people coming to see this are not coming to see it as a curiosity or serious bidders? Yeah, I'm trying to just try to decide if it's authentic or not. And I'm sure they made some, there was all different types, right? This one is different? Yeah. Maybe this one is older? No? Well, I don't know. As he takes a closer look, Billy starts to worry. There's things about it I like, and there's things about it I don't like. The problem here is there's not much drop between the blade and where your head is, so it might not get up enough speed to take your head off. It's a big disappointment. I have to say that my confidence level of being a real guillotine is gone. Billy's wanted to buy a guillotine for years, but he wants the real deal. To confirm his suspicions, he meets Xavier Dufestel, the dealer selling the guillotine. The thing which is very interesting is the only example of a guillotine made for the military campaign. That's the reason why the it's... aspect is very unusual. This guillotine has a peculiar design because it was built to be mobile. A normal guillotine blade drops four and a half meters. This one drops just two and a half meters. But it was still effective. Records suggest it executed over 1,400 people. Because this guillotine was, uh, was made for military military. Company, so it was erected very quickly. To take away. Move. Yes. Billy loves the dark side of history, but he's not convinced that this guillotine has any blood on it. Even Olivier Dubocage, the auctioneer, isn't sure it's genuine. It's hard to know. Yeah, I speak to the Ministry of, uh, of Justice for French government. It's not all authentic. So much for originality. The French Ministry of Justice itself can't confirm that it's real. It possibly is made up with some piece, other pieces. Some pieces are not authentic. Things aren't right. It's kind of buyer beware. Billy needs a break. He decides to put this deal on hold and head for the flea market. I love to scour the flea markets, and I always find something. I never leave here empty-handed. Billy still has sharp blades and severed heads on his mind. I am looking for an antique samurai sword, and I thought we might put a small collection together. And he knows just where to go. How are you? How are you, doing? How are you my friend? Oh, fine. Every time's fine. Jill Grimm is a well-known collector and dealer. I think he is the guy in Europe for samurai swords. The samurai sword first appeared in 12th century Japan when blacksmiths learned how to transform iron into hardened steel. Forged for maximum sharpness and durability, the samurai sword was both a deadly weapon and a work of art. It's a very, very strong blade. It's for fighting. Turn this. Only one. Oh, it's not? Oh, no. Never touch with hand. This one can cut one people in two parts. Really? From ear to ear, I guarantee. Well, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> this one is a 16th century, but it's copied for 12th century. Go inside here, slowly. Every blade are different. Yeah. You cannot find two blades. And, and how much is this? 35,000 euro. <laughs> OK. That's $50,000, and a little rich, even for Billy. OK, how's this one? Now, this one is signed, I noticed. This eh? one is signed. Do you know you the know, Do you know the Yinobu. name? Yinobu. Yinobu, in Japanese. Yinobu was in 1620. Billy's finally found one that's more in his price range. This is it. As soon as you pick this up, could you do 7,500 euros on this one for me? 
No. Eight thousand. There's a sword over there. Would you take ten thousand and sell me this and this for ten thousand? Because this will be a relationship we will be starting. Because now I will go learn. Okay, for you, ten thousand for the tour. Once again, Billy's cut a killer deal. Back at the hotel, he isn't enjoying the view. He's just received some emails that confirm his suspicions about the guillotine. Madame Talbot just sent me an email with a picture of what looks like this guillotine in a bar. It's a jazz bar. Is it the same? Yeah, look, it's got the bar in the same place. Oh, yeah, and you can see the Republique at the top. It looks like the same guillotine, but some parts are different. This sign is not on it in the bar. Are you sure? Positive, it's not there. What we're seeing in the bar is not the complete guillotine. So it appears some material has been added to it. The guillotine has been tampered with, and it gets worse. Is this from another guillotine? Yeah, this is expert? from a fellow online that builds model guillotines. This expert believes it's a fake. The guillotine is not a typical 1792 to 1800 construction. In my opinion, it's a very ugly reproduction built around the 1900s. Billy can only make one conclusion. I think this is a reproduction. Probably only good for slicing and dicing vegetables. This relic is a royal ripoff. <laughs> Billy Jameson is in Paris trying to buy an 18th century guillotine, but he has evidence that points to a fake. It possibly is made up with some other pieces. Some pieces are not authentic. Things aren't right. It's kind of buyer beware. But Billy's not ready to go home yet. He has another mystery to solve. A year ago, he brought an unusual mummified human torso here for analysis. And the verdict is now in. When I brought this to you last year, we thought it was one of the prisoners from when Henry II was killed. In 1559, King Henry suffered a severe head wound during a joust. His doctors inflicted the same injury on a prisoner and then rehearsed primitive brain surgery on him. It didn't work. Both the man and the king died. Is this the face of that infamous prisoner? Dr. Philippe Charlier has the answer. In fact, the anatomical lesions which are here are not exactly the same as them, these of the French kings. So we do not have a prisoner here, right? So this is not a prisoner. Billy's disappointed, but Dr. Charlier hasn't finished his story. In fact, with this torso, we discovered a lot of things about this death. When we did the carbon dating of this anatomical piece, we discovered that it was much older than the 16th century. Wow. It's dating back from the 12th to the 13th century. So this fellow is eight or 900 years old. Yes, and so this piece is probably the oldest dissection conserved in humanity. In the world? In the world. Sacre bleu, it's the world's oldest human autopsy. In fact, uh, this piece was probably carried out by uh, one of the oldest uh, European anatomists we know, which is uh, Guglielmo de Salicetto. You know the doctor that did this? Yes. Guglielmo de Salicetto a medieval Italian doctor made medical history when he learned how to inject a mixture of wax and mercury into a cadaver's arteries to preserve it for study. Man, it's just, I'm so shocked. I came in here expecting it to be possibly one of the prisoners, and now you're telling me. So there is no... It's much thing. better. Yeah. It's much better, and it's much more interesting for us. I can actually say this is the oldest autopsied person on the planet. Definitely, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Billy now owns a priceless piece of medical history. All's well that ends well in the wild world of treasure hunting. So far, this trip has cut both ways, but Billy still can't get the guillotine out of his head. You remember the ones that got away more than the ones you got. So he decides to meet his friend and fellow collector, Mark Delorme. I it was Mark who called Billy in Brussels about the guillotine. So what do you think, what do you think of the guillotine? 
I think pasta is good. I'm not feeling confident. I'm not feeling a lot of confidence in it. Billy still thinks there's too much wrong and not enough right. This one came out of a bar. That came from a bar doesn't mean it's a, it's, it's a fake or reproduction. Yeah. So for me, it's not a problem. Mark knows that Billy wants it. I hope you will buy it. Well, if, just, if it sells low. Like decoration or just, it's something, yeah. even if it's, it's a reproduction, yeah. it's belong to the history, you know, and you don't find such a artifact everywhere. Really, eh? Yeah. yeah. And finally, Mark cuts through. No, I think you're right. I'm, I'm gonna go bid on it. Would and you come stuff. with me as a, and course. translate? It'd be fun. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> it's a risky decision. Billy's going to try and buy a treasure that could be a fake. Billy Jameson's been losing a lot of sleep over an 18th century guillotine. There's things about it I like, and there's things about it I don't like. But his friend Mark Delorme has convinced him to try and buy it. No, I think you're right. I'm, I'm gonna go bid on it. Well, I did the and at the auction house, things are heating up. This sale has caused a buzz. And that worries Billy. One of the things that could happen is that somebody is interested in a French guillotine, has way too much money, hasn't checked it out, hasn't inspected it, bids a fortune on this, and I won't have a chance of buying it. The other thing that could happen is that people realize it's not authentic, and I pay a, a low price for this based on the fact it's more of, it looks nice. I might go to 25, 30,000. If it goes any higher, Billy's out of the race. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's time for the auction to begin and these buyers are ready to storm the gates. And the first item up for bid is the guillotine. The guillotine, on va vous rappeler juste les conditions de la vente après. Les conditions financières, on va dire, de la vente vont vous être rappelées. Donc, je fais vos conditions habituelles, paiement comptant, chèque espèce ou carte bancaire, vous avez des frais de... Mark is right there to translate and help Billy voilà. score his prize. <laughs> It's Billy's worst nightmare. This crowd hasn't a clue that it could be a fake. 85,000 on the phone. Yeah, that's crazy. Eh? Crazy or not, the price is going up and up. 175,000. Crazy. Until finally, it hits the roof. Wow. wow. Billy can't believe it. That was fucking crazy. I can't even explain it. Over $300,000. He thinks someone paid 10 times what it was worth. You gotta kinda be a little bit careful when you're dealing in these high numbers. You gotta do your own research. I believe this was a reproduction guillotine, probably not worth more than 10,000, 20,000 euros. At least Billy didn't lose his head on this deal. Back at the hotel, it's time to wrap up and head home. Too bad the guillotine wasn't real. What a drag. It's too oh, well. bad, but I think we made out like bandits anyway. Jessica is absolutely right. With two 17th century samurai swords, a 19th century Kono mask, a rare papier-mâché anatomy model, and a priceless piece of medical history, they don't have room for a guillotine. You enjoy just the nice view. Isn't this nice? Mm-hmm, it is, honey. We'll be back. Okay.